In this video, we present a very complex case, a patient with bilateral brunescent cataracts and advanced pseudoexfoliation. In fact, phacoemesis was noted on slit lamp examination on the right eye. So while phacoemulsification is to be attempted, the surgeon must be ready for alternative surgical techniques. Cataract surgeon begins as standard. Notice the poor pupillary dilation. Considering the dense nucleus and phacoemesis, iris hooks will be mandatory to expand the pupil. The 15 degree blade is used to create four corneal incisions, parallel to the iris plane, this will ensure optimal creation of a square shaped pupillary opening. Tripan blue is used to stain the anterior capsule, a 2.4 mm incision is made, and now a cystitum is used to create a very small opening, notice that even while puncturing the capsule, Faint movement is noted of the lens capsular bag complex, so we know there is some degree of zonular dialysis. Using the forceps, the capsular flap is then progressively enlarged to create a centered round capsulorexis. This is a somewhat loose capsule, due to the fragile zonules. So careful controlled regrabs are required to create the rexis. Now, viscoelastic is used to create space between the dense cataract and the capsular bag. This will facilitate placing a capsular tension ring. The inferior iris hooks are moved from the iris plane to instead Capturing the capsular opening, this will provide some added support. A capsular tension ring is now carefully deployed under the rexus, using the injector. However, the trailing end is not an ideal position, nevertheless the cataract is stable and centered. So we now advance to the FACO step. The FACO handpiece is introduced and cortical aspiration begins, however we can easily see progressive downward tilting of this very dense cataract. This suggests that, either the zonular dialysis is too extensive or some capsular tearing happened perhaps while inserting the CTR, it is now clear that FACO will not be possible. The plan now is to convert to extracapsular cataract extraction. There is a risk that the CTR could create difficulty, so we first use the hook of the injector to capture and remove the CTR. And here is the first clue to what may have happened. The leading end is completely trapped in capsule, which is dragged and now becomes extensively radially tiered. So now, the only option is intracapsular cataract extraction. The corneal incision is enlarged to about one-third of its diameter. Now there is a risk that this very dense cataract falls to the posterior segment, so to aid the subsequent maneuvers, a bent 25G needle is injected 4 mm from the limbus, to act as a scaffold supporting the posterior pole of the cataract. OVD is used to maneuver and position the cataract. Then the Snellen loop is slid under the cataract to extract it. Two attempts are required but the dense caramel brown nucleus is successfully and completely extracted. Now small cortical remnants may be grabbed with the rexes forceps. But considering there is vitreous in the anterior chamber it is better to use the van as scissors to cut the vitreous strands. Then proceeding with suturing of the enlarged corneal incision, four interrupted 10 o nylon sutures are placed before advancing to triamson alone assisted anterior vitrectomy. The manual vitrectomy is now performed using the cut IA mode first with highest cut rate and moderate vacuum. The goal is to clear the vitreous strands from the anterior chamber. Then the surgeon may switch to IA cut mode, to remove any residual cortex or epinuclear material.
The interior chamber is now clear of vitreous or any residual cataract material. We are now ready to finalize the corneal suture. The suture knots are rotated towards the stroma as we are ending this complex surgery. We opted not to place an IOL, as due to the density of the cataract, there was no way of knowing the macular or optic disc status. So we prefer to perform a careful post-op assessment and decide the most suitable secondary implantation technique. Remarkably, on first post-op week there is no corneal edema at all, the pupil is centered and with no major defects and the patient despite being a phacic is already reporting seeing better in a few weeks the secondary iol scleral fixation surgery will be scheduled